Hi, it's Kirby Summers, and I welcome you to my podcast. Today is September the 19th. It's Monday, and this is just a quick update on a couple of things. Number one, uh, many of you have been asking me about Professor Professor Hamamoto, and um, yeah, he is ill, I have discovered. Um, he has someone watching him at home. Um, and I was told by, um, you know, uh, someone that knows us both that um, prayers and well wishes are welcome at this time. It sounds uh, really uh, scary. You know, uh, I have appeared on his show uh, several times. He reminds me, he looks exactly like my father. So, you know, I bonded with him over the fact that we shared uh, the same um, opinion on many things. And, um, you know, he, he he's just an all around good guy. So I am definitely hoping, keeping all my fingers crossed, that he's going to pull through whatever is happening to him at this time. I'm going to keep you guys posted because I know that many of you who follow me also follow his work. Uh, in the meanwhile, would you be kind enough to subscribe and like the video? Uh, because I know sometimes I forget to ask at the end. Um, the other thing is I just want to quickly um, catch you up in case you don't know that Russell Brand, um, he has been accused by a fifth person. Initially, a couple of days ago, we heard about four uh, people, four women who came forward. One of them was 16 years old uh, with, you know, serious allegations against him. A fifth person stepped up. He has um, pretty much suspended a lot of the appearances he was going to make. Um, YouTube went ahead and while they did not remove his channel, he has, I think, like he used to um, uh, basically start his show saying he has 6.5 million followers. I think at this point it's 6.6. .6. Um, so while they have not removed his channel, and I think the word is yet, they demonetized it. So a lot of these people like Brand, who have so many millions of followers, make an incredible amount of money on the income they receive from the advertising. And that's why they become YouTubers because there's money to be made. I've never monetized my um, channel. I'm never going to monetize my channel because uh, th then you're faced with much more scrutiny over what you can say and, and not say. And already I'm hesitant about what I say. And so what I started to do as of, I think, a week or two ago is I started to upload to my Patreon, which I've had for, I think, three years. And basically, I used to just upload a lot of my research material and some books and articles. Now I've been uploading podcasts exclusively for my patrons only. Um, and I think that, you know, it's the, the, at $5, it's, you know, I do have my Substack, my newsletter, where I also put material that I find that I can't really share either on Twitter or on YouTube. Um, so there it's in written, the written word and on Patreon, it's not the same content, it's different, but it's information that I feel is a little bit um, risky on YouTube. To get back to Russell Brand, uh, they suspected, uh, they suspended, sorry, uh, his advertising on his channel. And they did that apparently in response to Katy Perry's um, YouTube video resurfacing that, you know, how he broke up with her in, he ended their relationship. He was married to her and he ended their relationship in 2011 via text message. Uh, they were married for 14 months. 
Uh, something else that happened is that uh, Vanessa Feltz uh, shared really offensive footage of Brand when she appeared on his show in, 20, in 2006. Basically, she's there. She's talking to him. And I'm just going to read this verbatim about what she said. I met Russell Brand when I was a guest on eForum and Big Brother's Big Mouth. So our career paths crossed quite naturally over the years. And on other occasions, I met him as a friend. I met him on his shows. And on one of those occasions, when in 2006, when I appeared on his chat show, she then played a clip in which Brand asked her, can I have it off with either you or your daughters? Now, let me interject here and say that at the time, because I did a little digging, one of her daughters was 15 years old. Okay, to which she quickly replies, no, you may not, no. And then the conversation continues. Or here's a wacky suggestion. Or three at once. No, she replied. So basically, he was asking if she wasn't going to let him have his way with one or both of her daughters, how about a mother and and, do and two daughters? I mean, you know, honestly, I have not never followed Russell Brand in the past. So I didn't really know anything about how um, offensive he was to women and girls. I I only really became aware of him after I began working on the Epstein story. I almost appeared on his um, YouTube channel to discuss the Epstein situation. And then uh, I didn't regularly check his stuff. I did know uh, through other podcasters and, and, you know, in the little circle of people who do this type of reporting that he was exposing uh, the elite and saying things that were offensive to mainstream. And so when this initially happened, I was thinking, oh, okay, this is a hit job. Uh, they're trying to cancel him. But quite frankly, I I have, in light of hearing from multiple sources about people who will be stepping forward in the Russell Brand case, other women and and other women who were minors at this time and other women who he appears to have coerced, I am no longer sitting on the fence. I'm kind of thinking, you know what, where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I don't think I believe that he is innocent of these charges. How they're going to prove it, I don't know. It's been quite a while. Um, in any event, he did make a horrible three or four minute video, which I did watch. It's really choppy. I don't know why a three or four minute video is as choppy as that. I guess it was edited. I don't edit any of my work. I pretty much just start talking and keep going. And I just don't know how to do it. And, and if I did know how to do it, I probably wouldn't spend the time. Otherwise, I would never have any content up on any of my platforms. The um, other thing I want to bring to your attention is that one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims, Juliet Bryant, uh, was deplatformed from Twitter. And I believe uh, she is either losing her TikTok and or Instagram, but she's being deplatformed in every situation. Uh, she has a new Twitter account. I'm going to share that with you here. It's at Dragon Apple B as in boy. I'm going to spell that for you. D R A G O N A P P L B as in boy. Follow her there. Um, she has put out a couple of short videos. Uh, she is saying things that other survivors have not said. Um, and I know that. Probably that's why she's being deplatformed. There is a link on her Twitter to, um, like, I think it's a seven or eight minute uh, video where she talks about her time with Epstein, which is quite interesting. And again, because I'm concerned about 
what's happening here on YouTube. I'm not going to get into it. I'm just giving you her new Twitter handle. She told me via DM that she's just going to use this until she gets deplatformed again. Uh, I really believe that all of the um, all of the owners of all of these what we call social media websites like Twitter. Elon Musk is really not a free speech person because my Twitter, if you remember, disappeared in November. And, you know, I've been using my secondary uh, account, which really was meant to be for my other business, my real estate business. And even there, I have to be careful. You know, I don't want to uh, say anything that's going to make me lose that account. So it's a quick update. Um, please like the video. Please follow Juliet. Feel free to leave your comments about what's happening with Russell Brand. Um, I know that kind of the opinion on him is almost 50-50. You know, some people think this is retaliation. Other people think, well, no, this is just what's happening, you know, in the wake of the Me, Me Too movement, which pretty much began not necessarily when Harvey Weinstein, but when, let's say, Bill Cosby, because that the Bill Cosby situation happened before Weinstein. But women have started to um, feel that it's okay to come forward. It, it has never been easy for anyone. I know that in my case, I have tried to tell my story for decades and I was always silenced. I would put it up as a comment on various platforms online and, you know, I would receive terrible pushback, um, you know, and then whoever has read my book, The Billionaire's Woman, uh, it's my memoir, uh, you'll read uh, about some of that stuff. In any event, um, again, it's Kirby. Uh, let's pray for Professor Hamamoto to get better. And I'll talk to you soon. Alrighty. Bye.